I am 100% convinced that every single being listening to me right now would want the key to access into this kingdom of God. And the answer lies in this phenomena. very warm welcome and good morning to our Trinity International family members from around the world. Thank you for having time to fellowship with us this morning in our Sunday morning service. I want to, before I continue, I need to inform you that this morning's sermon is going to be transitional. It's going to take you those of you that hearken to the words I'm going to share, those who God has specially prepared this sermon for, are going to have a supernatural experience of understanding this morning. So pay very careful attention and heed the words carefully. But before I continue any further with that, I would like to thank our Trinity International members and patrons from around the world for making a financial commitment to help us spread the gospel, to keep our fires burning so that I am not off the air. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and I thought this morning I want to take a moment to pray with you. If you are a tithe payer, if you have paid an offering into this part of God's kingdom, I want to pray with you. Raise your hand wherever you are. Even if you plan on starting to be a part uh, of the financial aid to our Trinity International um, Church, I want you to raise your hand right now and we're going to pray. Thank you, Father. You see those people, whoever they are, from wherever they are. These are the people, Lord, who you have chosen to bring this message and these sermons across the world. You have chosen these people to make that possible. And I ask you to return a blessing upon their lives even prepare the soil of their soul right now so that whatever is planted today the devil will not steal i cover them all and their families their homes make for their provision possible in jesus christ precious name and everybody said amen i don't want to leave also those of you who really in the depths of their heart want to make this contribution but are unable i say a prayer for you as well may god bless you also and make it possible for your provisions to be met beloved let's get straight into this morning's sermon we learned last week a powerful concept and i i just pray that if you're starting today and you haven't heard last week, please go and listen because it sets the platform to take you further. Last week we spoke about matter, the physical things of this world. And I explained to you through that video that we saw that when you break matter down, to its smallest elements, you have a resultant force bro broken down right to its basic elements beyond electrons is force. 
two forces. And if you go beyond those forces, you go to a place what we have called and what science called the unified field. It's made of no thing. And from this no thing, inevitably it means that everything comes. That's because if you break everything down, it comes from no thing. And therefore, everything comes from no thing. Every physical thing you see. So all matter that you see with your eyes, that has been created, comes from this unseen place called the unified field. And if, you know, the greatest desire of human beings from the time they've understood this concept, they wanted to find out how are we able to go down into this unified field so that we can bring forth into the seen world from the unseen what we desire. And you know, if you if you really listened last week, you'd know that when you achieve the reality of accessing this field, like what Jesus did, you actually have the power to create your own reality. You have the peace beyond human understanding. You have love that transcends every other emotion on the earth. It is all powerful. Just to access this place is a gold mine, if you can use that term. Now, now why this is important for the human being is because you and I, if we are physical in any way, we emanate from this field. So our bodies are actually created and brought into being from this unified field. But we have an advantage over other creatures on the, on the planet. We have a spirit and a soul. And those two things that God blessed us with has given us the unique ability to go into this field while we're still walking around on the earth. We do that through the essence of our soul and our spirit. Without the soul and spirit, it's impossible to access this unified field. And therefore, this morning, I'm going to point out steps that you and I need to adhere to that Jesus would have adhered to in order to access this place of all power to bring forth into reality the desires that we have or more importantly the true and trusted will of God for his children. If you are able to spiritually reach this unified field which is possible because Jesus has done it. He's created things from nothing. And I demonstrated that with a few examples last week. There are no limits when you are able to transition into this field. With men, mere men who are not able to go into this realm, it's impossible. But with God, who is the unified field, I mentioned that to you. Science calls it unified field. But we know this field from which all things came to be the realm, the heavens, or God's realm. Now, when we say all things are possible with God who lives in this no thing unified field realm. For mere men with the mortal mind 
who are not able to access this field, it will be impossible. But with God, it is possible. Now, we heard these specific words mentioned by Jesus in the book of Matthew. Jesus looked at them and said to them, With the men, this is impossible. But with God, all possibilities exist. Nothing is impossible for God. He went on further to relay this power to his church. And he says, nothing is impossible to all who believe. Now, that gives you and I the power to access the reality of all possibilities. In science, it's known as the quantum world. Schrodinger's cat demonstrates that reality exists in a super state, which means superposition rather, which means that everything can be true and nothing can be true at the same time. This now I directed those of you who have a certain aptitude to understand it. Now, I've, I've, I've got a clip that I've played a few times to my church earlier on and to the online community as well. But if you can only understand the concept behind this scientific enigma, then you can get closer to understanding how you can access this unified field. And I'm sure you'll want to know how to access this field. To be in the realm where God lives, breathes and from where all things come. To create your own reality. I am 100% convinced that every single being listening to me right now would want the key to access into this kingdom of God. And the answer lies in this phenomena that is demonstrated in the scientific clip that I'm about to play. Now if you understand it, Oh my God, you're going to reach a new level of understanding. So pay careful attention to the next six minutes and watch this clip. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So when we throw things, that is matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> 
An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing. This demonstration is called the double slit experiment. Now, when you break down matter to its bare essentials, there is nothing, no thing. It therefore resides in a quantum state where all possibilities exist at the same time. The only way, this video will tell you now that we just watched, the only way to collapse the reality of all possibilities is through observation or becoming aware of a situation. So once you are conscious of something, once you are aware of something, then you collapse that field and you kill off whatever could possibly work for you, you actually destroy it. This is the cornerstone of where we are going to go today. Now let us see how this all these possibilities were collapsed. When was it first collapsed? It will take us back to the Garden of Eden. Let us look at what happened there. 
Adam and Eve lived in this quantum state where everything that they needed was provided for them. There was nothing short. God gave them all liberty. All things were possible for them to talk to animals, to guide the, they, they had, they were living in this unified field while being on this earth. They had constant access to create and get whatever they needed. This was the power of Adam and Eve. Until the day, the devil, listen to these words very carefully, the devil influenced them to be aware that there was more. He planted a seed for them to look at and he made them aware. And the moment he made them aware, it drove their curiosity to want. And once they are aware, once you are aware, you will want. Write that down somewhere. Because it's going to get you to that quantum state or to that unified field. Write that down somewhere. The moment you want, that means I am aware I don't have. And the moment you are aware that you don't have, then you collapse all possibilities. And from the moment they became aware, Adam and Eve collapsed all possibilities. And now they were left with no provision. They were thrown out of the garden. Now they started to want what they already had. They had food. Now they wanted food. Everything that they had. In fact Eve and Adam were discussing. In that book of life and Adam of Eve. Uh, Adam and Eve. And they were saying. We had everything. We even had angelic food. Why? Because they were in the unified field. They were not eating earthly food that, that the, the, the cats and dogs were eating. They were eating manna from heaven. Where, where were they living? In the unified field. That's where they were. Eve said to Adam, we were there, man. And we lost all the things, all possibilities ceased to exist for us. And we got the worst end of it. But how did it start? The devil convinced us to want what we didn't have. But what we didn't have, we didn't really need. That's what you need to understand this morning. So, wanting is a direct disobedience to God. I preached this in much detail. Two weeks ago, when I spoke about David, when I spoke about uh, Samson, they all wanted more than what they had and then they lost it. You see, after they became aware that Satan told them, be aware this is a tree here that you mustn't eat of and so forth. Then they became aware and, and they became more aware. As time went on, they became more aware. The first thing they aware, became aware of was that they were naked. And God said, who told you you're naked? Lord, we are aware we're naked. It seems like a contradiction of terms, but awareness of your surroundings and circumstances it collapses the ability for, all, for God to do the best for you. Let's put it that way. For your world to have what is best for you, 
the moment you are away you collapse god's potential for creating the best world for you now there is a, a little video clip i'm uh, you know next week i might play that for you but in it, it there's a an ex, ad, ad, advertising executive who has become familiar with what was going on but when he started off he was doing advertising campaigns for major companies corporations and so forth and he said what they wanted me to do for them is to make people want their products that's what advertising does when you look at a product a car you must make people feel that their life is incomplete if they don't have that experience to drive that car their life will not be the same if they don't experience the pleasure of eating that burger they they their life will be incomplete if they don't have the pleasure of going for that particular holiday so the whole point of world advertising is driven by making people want this is the actual voice of satan because he was the first one that promoted the want and you know churches do the same thing by the way they bring about attention to what you're going through and they want you to be aware of what you're going through and they want you to want a solution to want something because it's all driven by pointing out and making you aware and so we're going to go into depths of understanding the steps to take you to this quantum world but we first examining what prevents the quantum world for from working for you what prevents you from accessing the unified field so so you know sometimes you ask the question lord man how can we reverse time just to go back to that garden and tell eve do not be tempted to want mm -hmm. how that will change but but first let's ask ourselves leave the garden alone how do we convince ourselves not to be tempted to want now the good news is this jesus came to give us this abundant life a life where we have no want the life that was stolen from humanity the perfect life where all things become possible but the key is not to want it seems like a paradox doesn't it but i'm taking you deeper understand this this unified field from where everything came and all possibilities exist is actually called the kingdom of heaven cannot be seen with the eye it's this field from which everything emanates and so from now on we're going to call this unified field the kingdom of heaven if that's okay with you so when you are now spiritually inside this kingdom of heaven you will have the power to shut down to open to lock to close you have power to bind to loose to do everything that is that you want when you have access to this kingdom Matthew 16 Jesus's words itself it's the young young's literal translation young's took the original greek and when he translated it he doesn't didn't change words he used the exact translation so we're going to look at that translation and i will give to thee the keys of the reign of the heavens and whatever thou mayest bind upon the earth shall be having 
being bound in the heavens and whatever you may may loose upon the earth shall be having been loosed in the heavens so when you jesus was offering to his church access to the unified field or the kingdom of heaven the word heavens are used which means that it's a field and this field called the heavens from which all things came god has given you and i his church not the fake church the called out ones he has given us keys so that we can bind and loose close and open from this field from the kingdom the thing is we haven't learned how to use those keys but the first thing before you even start using the keys is to be content and at peace and ignore or not be aware of how difficult your life is of how much problems you have cuz once you're not aware you have now the ability to turn those keys so that you can have this vortex open for you this makaba the spinning vortex that will bring you right into the kingdom core So the first thing you have to do if you're holding the keys in your hand is not to be aware because once you be aware you collapse the reality of all possibilities. You live only in the reality of what you are aware of. Nothing changes. So we we know that part of awareness but we might get to it a bit later. So now officially the first step would be to look within you for answers not without you outside of you in other words because once you look outside of you you become aware once you become aware you collapse the chances for you to get answers so when you are in that place of meditation in that place of self counseling you must always look within yourself we I'll, i'm going to start to teach you how to do that as we go on in the sermon and so when you look within yourself you start to correct yourself now in order for you the first thing is once you you identify with yourself your own your ownness who you are at your core look deep within you and when you are in that space you cannot then be influenced by anyone or anything none of the people around you their behavior will affect you their words will affect you their actions will because once you become aware of them you acknowledge them you even take it to god in prayer that means your awareness collapses your possibilities so when no influence can get to you when you are in this meditative state you just look within yourself so nobody and nothing can influence who you are now there's an anecdote a young monk once approached a wise old zen he said master i feel like uh, losing myself in the opinion of others the actions are shaping me to behave in a way that i don't like i'm becoming bitter i'm becoming sad Uh, i'm the me is not me anymore it's becoming what others are contributing to me 
how do i stay true to myself master zen replied imagine you are a clay pot obviously this doesn't really practically work but just an example um if you are filled with water you will take the shape of the water that fills you but if you stay empty you will take your natural shape so when others haven't had the influence in you as a person you have become like this because of my father i've become like this because of my mother my wife has made me like this my husband has made me such a miserable person i was never like this before they have had influence on you and your character so when you look within these are the things you must recognize lord i have been changed to suit my environment i have been changed to accommodate the behavior of other people i have become hard because of this that i went through i've become sensitive because of the abuse i've went through so your whole persona your spirit your character has been influenced by outside factors so when you meditating recognize this and then determine within yourself this is me i am not going to change me for anybody or because of anybody or because of i have no money i'm not going to get depressed if my husband leaves me his actions cannot alter the me that god made so everyone's character is actually shaped and molded by everything they experienced and this changes the me that god actually put on this planet so that self reflection is so much very important oh my child's behavior has made me such an angry person no no when you that's why when you counseling when you go for counsel the counselor's primary objective is to correct you not to change the behavior of people around you is to correct you and sometimes people don't want to be corrected so they blast it off and 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 this is what god is driving at the you and so when you meditate to go into this unified field you have to acknowledge you go back to the core you now i'm i'm skipping ahead because i'm so excited right now you, you know when G, you know children little children because they have little or no influence yet on their lives they don't hate they don't curse they don't they, they don't think black is black and white is white they have nobody has influenced them their character they are innocent they don't know right from wrong yet that's why you can't baptize a child also because they don't can't make choices they are already innocent now Jesus said if you do not become like one of these little ones you cannot access the unified field you cannot access the kingdom if you don't become you that i put here you become what others made you oh man i hope you understanding this this excitement is getting to me so i hope you excited as well because it's getting us closer now god made a profound statement to moses when he first met moses in exodus 3:14 he says this to moses and god said to moses i am who i am a ye or yahweh that was the name and he said thus you shall say to the children of israel i am has sent me to you what is so profound about this is because god said your behavior or eve's actions doesn't change who i am i am that i am i am unchangeable 
Jesus said, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So your behavior doesn't alter the God who created everything. He is God. It doesn't alter who he has become because he is the same. In fact, Hebrews tells us this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Now even doctrines change the behavior of Christians. Doctrines change behavior of all people believing in different religions. They have been indoctrinated to behave in a certain way. Because they followed other people who behaved in that way. And so they've adopted the character and behavior of other people before them. That is an altered state. That is not I am. So you cannot go and tell anybody I am. If other people have made you who you are. That's why in my sermons. I don't tell you what to think. I give you stuff and let you think it. So you alter yourself by understanding. Not by me dictating to you from the pulpit. How you as a Christian should be. You have to make the decision. Even God didn't impose his will and told you, you be like this. And so, free will is what God gave to every human being. And we continue with Hebrews. For it is good that the heart be established by grace. Not with, so the character must be established by grace. Not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Now this foods he's talking about his spiritual doctrines. So he's speaking here about the Pharisees and about all those religious people that they fed people and changed people with their doctrines. So by, ask, by, by telling you to be unaware or not affected and not influenced by outside forces when you in that place to access the unified field of the kingdom of God. He actually now in that moment has taken the power away from your husband to influence you. He has taken the power of of your wife and your children and your boss and money from bringing influence over you. He has removed the power and he has taken it and put it squarely in your hands. You now have the power of what influences you or not. Once you become aware of their existence and their actions and their words, it influences you. But God has removed the power from them if you want to access his kingdom, you cannot let them alter I am. You are. You know, if my husband was only nice to me, I'll be nice to him back. No. You be nice despite everybody else. You be you. Despite what, despite what other people are. So, that's why when you go for counseling, when you come to me, if you have to come, I look directly into the crevices of your spirit to alter you. Now, listen to this, write it down. The moment you become aware of other people's influence over you and their behavior or others around you, you collapse your ability to use the key to the kingdom of heaven. That's why Jesus always had the key available. Even while before, he was praying, he was meditating, but when he came out, he walked constantly with all that power. Because other people's behavior, including Judas, didn't change who Jesus was. So, getting hurt because your husband let you down, Getting angry because your children are not listening to you. Getting depressed because you don't have enough money. 
getting frustrated because your boss is not giving you promotion, getting disappointed and broken because you can't find a job. All these things work against you because it's making you aware, because it's affecting your emotions, which is affecting you, which is altering you. You are not you who make you. You are the result of people and circumstances who are making you. Therefore, you've given them power over you. You've given money power over you. If you have, you're happy. You don't have, you're sad. So your condition, the I am in you, the person you are, is conditioned and changed by whether you have money or you don't have money. This is what you introspect about. Lord, I'll be the same if I have or I don't have. I want just that access. Because once you do that and you influenced, if money has control over your emotion, you will certainly not be given the key. If somebody has power over you, if Satan had power over Eve's emotion, she's certainly not going to have the key to the kingdom. Because havoc will result. So, let us uninstall the ability for other people to influence you. Self-reflect and who has influenced me, man? Who has changed me? How has money changed me? How has this changed me? Self-reflection. And then you bring you to where you're supposed to be. Reshape you. Empty that clay jar of all the water that came in from everywhere. And you be you, the you you want to be. So let's do two things. Uninstall all influence. Be unaware of your situation. Now you've just got two powerful keys. To hand you the keys to use. To enter the kingdom of God. Now the last thing. When you enter into this. We first have to go into a meditative mode. But I will get to that in a moment. You must come with no motive. Lord, I don't want to, you know, this seems like, Lord, I only want to access this place because I want to have my life perfect. I want things to work out for me. I want all your goodness. I want to be in, in the Garden of Eden again. And the more even Adam wanted it, the more misery they went through. The more you want, the less chance you'll have of getting it. And so when you come to that realm, when you want to access it, you come with no motive. I'm not coming here, Lord, in this meditative state because I want you to change my husband. I want you to fill my bank account. I want a new job. I'm looking for a wife I can't find for so long. I'm coming with no motive. I just love you. I'm coming because I want a fellowship with you. I'm coming, Lord, because my heart aches to be next to you, with you, in you. I want to know you, Father. You know, you come self, Lord, alter me, change me from who I have become through others. I want to be me. Bring me back to me. Only that, no other motive. Because once you try to have motive, you will not turn the key. You will have no access. It seems counterproductive, doesn't it? I want to access the place because I want my life to work out. But if you want, you won't access. The resultant force of you coming in with no motivation is all possibilities. But you have to program your mind not to want. You have to program your mind when you're standing in the place of meditation not to be aware of all these evil things that are going on around you. So when you're in this meditative state, this is not prayer now. This is coming in meditation to correct yourself, to ignore the outside world, 
to be less, not aware, coming with no motive. When you come to this place, you can't come and say, Lord, I want the power to heal my body. I want the power to do this. I'm going in, I, I, all these things, you've got to leave them at the door. Because once you are aware of your situation, all possibilities collapse. Remember that now. Now, many of you would have, will testify to what I'm saying. That when you go to God in this mode where you acknowledge the things, you are aware of, Lord, the world is like this, I'm aware of my family is like this, I'm aware of my husband drinking, I'm aware of the gambling problems, I'm aware of these family issues and fights and squabbles, I'm aware. Once you go in prayer like that, you already cancelled any access to the kingdom. You cancel it yourself just by the words of your prayer. And you will testify, many of you, that sometimes the more I bring these things every day to God, it seems like the worst things are getting. Like I can't find the answers. And you know the devil uses that to disappoint you. He uses that to break your spirit. To make you hopeless that you will not pray now. To make your situation so untenable that you don't feel like praying anymore. That is what disappointment will come because of circumstances. He wants to make you aware. So as a Christian, the first thing you need to recognize is, Lord, you take care of whatever issues that are bothering me. I am not bringing that to you. You know what I am going through. You sort it out. I am coming here when I am coming to you now in this meditation. Everything is gone. Nothing. I am leaving that at your feet. There you sort it out. I am coming with you with no heaviness, with no burden. Take my burdens, I am giving you. I am coming now in meditation with nothing. I am broken. I am me. I am simple. I am nothing. You know some of you, when you were broken, when you really were broken and you sought God, broken you just wanted to heal that spirit of yours some of you were even close to suicide when you came with that brokenness god reached out to you his hand you some of you didn't want anything you just wanted lord just mend me i, I just need to be better I, I just want i just want to feel like this and god mended you but not only that all possibilities don't forget this is the God we serve. Now when you're going to this meditative state, when you want to go, now don't do what the, the cabal does, what Satanism does. They got ways and means of entering this realm. It's also a unified realm and the secrets from it were stolen by Satan. It's in a different part of the heavens. And, 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 and Satan has access, and you remember we read from you the book of Enoch where Satan stole the secret wisdom things from God and he came and told it to men and they used these rituals to access the realm and Satan brings them and gives them, you know this knowledge that they get, where, where does all ideas come from, novel ideas? All the ideas about making aeroplanes, making biomechanics and, and bioengineering and all the, where do you think that comes from? Radio waves and electromagnetic waves and where do you think it all came from? It came from that field. The first person to create this and the Leonardo da Vinci, the one he knew about aeroplanes and all before it was even invented. He drew things that were not even in the mind of man. Where do you think they got it from? They got it from that field. Because everything comes from there. And so they have their own means of access to that field. They do rituals, they do chants, they, they all sorts of things. They, they smoke... Uh, um, Hawiska, they, they, they smoke magic mushrooms, they drink um, uh, blood, you know, that hydrogenated the blood that is uh, adrenalized. And so all these things they do so that they can spin and, to, and they can access the unified field. But they come with a want. And that's why the devil blesses them with whatever they want. He grants their wishes. And he's even tempted Jesus. You want? You want the kingdom? You want? And Jesus says, no thank you. 
You see? And, and that's what Satanism does. That's what Illuminati tempts people with. You want. And then they involve you in these rituals where they want to go to that realm and manifest things. And they manifest... Listen, it's, it's a... If you want and you're just struggling, Satanism offers it to you. And if your soul, if your name is not written, then you might even go there. But uh, if your name is written, listen, you'll follow me. You'll understand. But in, in God, when you go to this realm, there's no rituals to perform. You go to this realm, you block the outside world out. No unnatural sounds. You try and get people away from you or you get away from people. Natural, only natural sounds might help you. Maybe the frequency that we spoke about. But it must be all natural. You block out the sound of the world if you can. And so when you're in meditation, now this is not prayer now, where you babble. This is inner reflection. And once you're there and you shut the outside world, you don't become aware of anything. Even in the crevices of your mind, do not become aware of what my husband did last week, what my child did the other day, how much money I don't have. Don't, no, when you're in that mode, you have to practice not being aware. Don't have distraction. Now, Jesus did that several times. I, I wish I could read all the scriptures where he went to do that. Lots of his prophets did that. Went to a quiet place just to pray, but not pray like you think. Ba 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 ba. Oh Lord, I need this. You know, I need that. And it, as soon as you do that, you it's all lost. I'm talking about self-reflection, just waiting for Him, loving Him, broken. I am simple, Lord. I'm coming before You, and just be quiet, and block out every need you, everything that you want, block it out. Every desire of your heart, block it out. Come with no motive. And you be in his presence for as long as your spirit leads you. There is no time limit. Luke chapter 5 tells us, However, the report went around concerning him all the more. And the great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And listen to what he did. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. That word pray means in the original Greek, prosiokomenos. And that means, the divine interpretation says that that word carries with it a notion of worship. Greek word for worship is proskino, proskinio, which is not present in other words or for prayer. Desler, another theologian, writes the basic idea of prosiokomai is to bring something. So, when there is a need, Jesus goes into this meditative state and he reaches into that same realm where we spoke about with no motive, but he just goes there with no motive. And after he finished praying for everybody, he goes into this place with no motive and he comes out carrying this tremendous power with him. Because he's just made connection and access to the unified field or the kingdom of heaven. Luke repeats, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray. But not the pray like how you think. The prayer has nothing to do with words. It has to do with the worship. And he continued all night and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from then, he chose 12 whom he named his apostles. So when he went into this unified field, the kingdom, God gave him direction as to what was going to happen and who he must choose to be the disciples. Because all wisdom comes from there. That field actually sent the apostles. They don't know why they came, but that field sent the apostles to Jesus. 
So whenever he went, he went without human presence, without human influence. Whenever he went to pray, he, it was nature around him only. He needed to be unaware of everything else. When he became unaware, all things became possible. So, there must be a total surrender to God. There must be a removal of the influence from outside. There must be unawareness of everything that your life is. And you must return to your core. Now, if you are going to reach the kingdom, there's a doctrine of intercession that plagues Christians. What is intercession? Intercession is prayer on behalf of someone else so that God can answer their prayer so coming in, being aware of a situation is actually counterproductive. And intercession while people sacrifice, while they go for early mornings, late nights, sacrifice the happiness of their home and making things, they, they go and they do the opposite. It's a doctrine of what? You see, there's only one intercessor between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ. We learn that in scripture. There's no other mediator. You are not a mediator. You must remember this Bible was concocted, altered by the Edomites, who were sitting in the Catholic church that chose what goes in and what stays out. And so, this doctrine, this food, has been altering you and these intercessors go they are aware of the situation they don't meditate they don't leave the outside, outside world they don't change who they are some of these they are filthy people they hate people they have hatred in their heart they have jealousy they have unforgiveness but they are coming they don't want to look at the inside they are just looking at it. You, you cannot go to God on behalf of somebody. Now I've learned this. Because Jesus is the sole mediator. He's the, inter he's the only intercessor. Between you and God. And so understand this. First Timothy tells us. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all. To be testified in due time. So the power of. Prayer is obstructed. The power of manifestation of all possibilities and the good possibilities for you is actually broken down and collapsed because of the presence of others, the influence of others, the awareness and the food that has altered people to behave in a certain way. Oh, the devil has messed especially Christians up. Some of these people demand things into reality. They demand. They go with a severe motive. You know, they bang on the door of God. Oh, you got to bang on the door. You got to bang. And you keep banging until God opens the door. Listen, you cannot demand that. If you go with motive, you get nothing. And Christians, listen, let me speak to you. Now, when you're in this meditative mode, Christians most probably have never been taught to do this. Because they always go in with a motive when they pray. They want to bang the door down and demand. And let's see what the Bible tells us. So I ask you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. You know what this is talking about? Because they use that scripture to justify banging on God's door. In the last verse it says, if you then being evil, how know how to give good gifts to your children? How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This asking is for the Holy Spirit. This is not to demand and bang the door down. Please understand. You see, that's why the food has altered Christians to behave in it. And they all sit in churches. They keep going week after week, getting fed the same 
rhetoric over and over. They are recycling the stuff. And they are all wallowing in their own places and turmoil and corruption inside of them. And, and they have no access to that place. I am giving you the keys this morning. Take it seriously. Do you know you don't have to actually pray and ask God for anything? Did you know that? Because he doesn't want you to be aware. You know like how the birds are not aware. The flowers are not aware. He wants you to be the same. Not aware. And when you are not aware he provides. Let, let's, let's see the, the scripture what it tells you. Matthew 6. Therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, nor life. If no, is not life more important than food and body more, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. All possibilities. Are you not more valued than them? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his life span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not more clothe you? Oh, you little faith. Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek the kingdom of God and his right standing with him. And all these things will simply be added to you. Oh man. You know, I am not finished this morning. But I am going to leave this sermon here and trust me, next week you are going to want to tune in. Because it is going to be explosive. And we are going to dig out in what way the devil wants to make sure that you do not use those keys. So this morning I have given you some steps. If you are not sure, go back and listen, write them down. These are the things I want you to start to practice. When you go to pray, no motive. Distance yourself. Make time for your communion with God. Introspect. Stop blaming others for who you've become. Go back to being that little child that God talks about. For if you are that little child, He said you will have access to the kingdom of God. His words to the unified field. Now, if you've got enough this morning, you've got enough to last you the week to put into practice. And I want to pray with you so that we can reinstate what God, Adam and Eve lost in that garden. We're going to do it together. As the Lord reveals it to me, I reveal it to you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you broken. We come with individualness. Each of us is not a community. We are individuals, Father. And in each heart that is reaching out to you for a change within, for a change on the inside, allow them to have the strength to make changes. Allow them, Lord. This is a prayer to you, Father, on, uh, on asking as their shepherd for you to do for them. Not something material, but something spiritual, Lord, in their lives. Cover them with your precious blood, my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said, Amen. God bless you, beloved. Have yourself a fantastic new week. God bless. See you next week.